Uh, I, and I commend it to the House. Uh, this next call is a split call, and I call Jo Luxton. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm really pleased to stand here and take a call here on the Crown Minerals Amendment Bill, second reading. Um, it's nice to actually, I mean that, stand here and take a call because I feel like I've been sitting in this house on several days and we've never quite got to it, so it's nice to be here. Um, what we, I want to, I want to um, first of all um, thank the Select Committee. Obviously I was a part of that Select Committee, but I didn't come on to that Select Committee until nearer the end of this process. And I have to say, it's a pretty, um, it's a really collegial select committee, and I think that's really good because it's, it um, ensures that ensures that we work well together and we look at legislation quite thoroughly, and um, it helps it to come back to the house in the state that you see it today. So we've examined this piece of legislation, and as has been said before, we've agreed unanimously. Um, on this piece of legislation, but we've added some amendments to it through this select committee process. I also want to thank Jonathan Young for his great chairmanship. Um, he's very good at seeing us uh, have our say. Um, and as I said, it's really collegial. So uh, I want to uh, thank the submitters. We've heard today that we're, there were only 11, um, which is a small number, but as um, Jonathan Young mentioned in his contribution to the second reading, there are only a small amount of participants that work within this industry. And we appreciated the views that they expressed, as other members have mentioned, and, and some of the things that they brought up we considered really carefully, and as a result of some of those things, they have been added into the piece of legislation. And I think that's the beauty of um, our parliament and democracy, that people can come and submit to these select committees, and we do consider what they say very carefully, and they actually can make change to, to legislation. So I just want to move on to the bill itself. So it's not a large, uh, a large piece of legislation. It's, um, someone's referred to it before as tidying up, and that is what it does. It's not large, but it's actually an important bill, uh, and it's quite technical. It's quite tricky to get your head around. So it addresses regulatory duplication gaps, errors, and inconsistencies with the um, current Act. And one of the important part, uh, aspects of this piece of legislation is that it will provide clarity for the industry and regulators around permitting um, uh, confusion, because we know that if we have confusion within this industry, it actually could be quite catastrophic. So it's really important that everyone is, has clarity around these rules. Um, we know that the nature of our petroleum industry is changing, and we need to ensure that our legislation reflects the changes that we are seeing. Um, when we think about the changes that are happening within this industry, um, it's really important that we, we really keep those, the changes that are in mind because there are risks that come with change. And so it, when, when we're managing change, it does need to be, I believe, in this particular industry, managed by the Crown so that we, through retaining oversight of the acquisition and divestment activity occurring within this sector, the current legislation says that where you have a change in control of a permit operator, to, which is someone who, um, who operates the day-to-day the -day management of a permit, um, if it changes from one permit participant to another. So at the moment that can happen without any oversight, but this new piece of legislation will ensure that the minister um, and, or a delegated authority must um, have oversight or give permission, give consent to someone to become an operator and this is this is really important and when you want to, if you want to become an operator there are certain criteria that you have to meet as well you must ensure that you are, have um, that you're financially viable because there'd be nothing worse than if you are in charge of the the clean up or the decommissioning of a um, a, my, a, a mine at the end of its life and you go broke so therefore it's not that the work is not going to happen to ensure that it's um, well, it will happen, but it will be at someone else's expense. So we need to ensure that people um, uh, have the financial stability um, when taking on these particular roles. Um, another thing I wanted to bring up about this is that it gives certainty to the, to the Minister and the public of New Zealand, because as we know, this type of industry is watched very closely by the public, um, and it will help ensure that the public really believe um, or can see that the industry is really trying hard um, and is, is adhering to strict guidelines to ensure that um, it is sticking to the um, 
that, sticking to the rules that it has um, agreed to. Thank you. I call Maureen Pugh. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. And I uh, stand today too.